All right, folks, it's Bass Action back in action here. In this video, in this chapter, we're gonna start to look at polar coordinates. And the first thing that you're gonna notice when you look at this graph is it's gonna look pretty strange to you because a polar coordinate is plotted on a circular graph instead of our rectangular graph. So we're gonna have a whole bunch of new information on that and different ways to find new um, multiple equivalent angles like we had with our co-terminal angles in our um, early trade days. So let's go through some general information and all this video is going to really cover is how to plot some points and find equivalent angles. So over here in this box that just summary of information are rectangular coordinates. The ones that you've been working with all up until now have a nice form of x comma y. We've done that a ton. A polar coordinate, however, is still going to have two points or two values inside the parentheses, but they're going to be expressed as an r comma theta, the r being a radius and the theta being an angle measure. Now, we're going to also translate a few things from our rectangular days to a slightly new language. So pole is simply going to be our new word for origin or the point zero zero. The polar axis is gonna be our new word to describe the positive x-axis. And theta equals pi over two is gonna be our new way to talk about the y-axis. Okay, that said, we're gonna look at how to plot some points. So you can see I've got some points plotted here already, and we, um, I'm gonna show you how I got those. So the red dot there is going to be our point A. And the way that I got to that point was first, I counted out four for four little rings here. So, um, and it was a positive four, so I went in the positive direction. So I went one, two, three, four, and then I rotated around that ring two pi over three, and that's how I landed. Now my next point was B, it's gonna be my blue one here, and you'll notice that it's a negative R value. So instead of counting in this direction first, I counted a negative three. One, two, three, and now I'm out at the third ring. And then when I'm gonna rotate in the same positive direction, I've always gone, so I'm gonna rotate that around and get to this point B right here. C is going to be my green point right here, and C, I counted six in the positive direction, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I rotated half the circle, followed that ring all the way around, and that's how I landed here at C. And then my last one, of course, logically would have been D. And to get the D, I had a negative five, so I counted one, two, three, four, five, negative five, and notice that the angle was a negative seven pi over six. So instead of rotating down, and going in that counterclockwise positive direction, I rotated in this negative direction here to get to my negative seven pi over six. So that's how I got those original points there. And then down here at the bottom, we're gonna look at how to find other equivalent points. And some of it's gonna be similar and then our last part's gonna be slightly different. And then what you can do to help understand the plotting of the points is once we get these equivalent ones, you could go back and you could actually try to replot these new points and show that they land in the same place. So the first one that I'm going to find some equivalent values for here is A. Okay, the one, same A that we had up above. And the first method for finding equivalent points is the same as what we've been doing before. Add and subtract a full rotation. So we're gonna keep that same R value and then I'm gonna add and subtract the full rotation to the original two pi over three. So I'm going to get a four comma eight pi over three, and then I'll also have a four comma negative four pi over three. And if you follow the strategy for plotting the points that I just went over up there, you should find that these land in the same place that I plotted the other ones earlier, the other point A earlier. We could do the same thing with our point B from up above. I'm gonna add and subtract that full rotation of eight pi over four, and I'm gonna keep the R value the same. So I'm gonna have a negative three and then 13 pi over four. And then I'll also have a negative three and a negative three pi over four. And again, if you just go plot these up above, following the same strategy that I just went over, then you will find that you get to the same exact place that I originally plotted B. 
Now this second method for finding an equivalent point is different. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change the sign on the R value, and then we're only gonna add half of the rotation. So now when I write the point, since my original A was a positive four, I'm gonna write that now as a negative four, and then I'm only gonna add half a rotation to that two pi over three, so I'm gonna get five pi over three. And if this feels confusing, I can't emphasize it enough. Take the strategy that we just went through and go plot this point, and you'll see that it does in fact land in the same place that we plotted the original A. We can do the same thing with our point B. We're gonna do a negative R, and in this case, the R value was negative to start with, so I'm gonna flip it to a positive, and then I'm only gonna add half the rotation to the five pi over four, and then I'll get nine pi over four. And again, just take a second, it won't take you long, to just try to plot those points and you'll see that you land in the same place. Now, on the next couple videos, we're gonna talk about how to move back and forth between a rectangular form and the polar form. And then we're gonna, throughout this chapter, we're gonna learn a whole bunch more things that we can do with polar coordinates.